short drive from Chapel Hill down to Raleigh to take on NC State. The Tar Heels and Wolfpack, well, they're in the middle of the pack of the ACC early on. Syracuse and Virginia, they lead the way. Duke, they've lost back-to-back -back games as they went down last night to Miami. So right now, NC State, North Carolina playing vital games early on in this ACC race. Bob Susan alongside Lafonso Ellis. Exactly the kind of atmosphere that you want and the kind of atmosphere that gets generated, not only along Tobacco Road, but when you get these two programs both coming off of very key wins over the weekend, maybe hoping to carry that momentum into tonight. It's really about confidence for North Carolina State. Missed an opportunity to get a signature win at UVA. Did that in their last game for Carolina. Talking about an elite team that struggled offensively. Been looking for that signature win. Now prove that they should be in that upper echelon of the nation. Uh, NC State, it seems to be all about their guards in terms of production. Having said that, though, the Fonz focus takes us inside the paint. Uh, my favorite place to be down in the paint is where it's going to happen tonight. You talk about a North Carolina team that gets 45% of the misses, number one in the country. North Carolina State's going to have to take care of that area if they hope to get a win and limit the second chance point opportunity. Secondly, you have to contain Marcus Page, a guy who's been a big shot maker and a big shot taker. You got to know where he is on the floor. And you must get production from your bigs if you're North Carolina State. 25 points or more will win this game for them. That's because of all the production that they get from the three-man backcourt. As Anthony, Cat Barber, Trevor Lacey, and Ralston Turner all average in double figures. Lacey is fourth in the ACC in scoring so far. It's 16.9 points per game. And Marcus Page is dealing with plantar fasciitis in his right foot. Also has a sprained right ankle, so he's going to need some help in the backcourt from Justin Jackson and J.P. Tokido as well. Well, it's not going to help playing without Joel Berry, the third guard out there who can really push the pace and give some help on the defensive end. UNC compromised in that backcourt tonight. Joel Berry with a groin pull in practice after the win over Louisville. So he's out two to three weeks. And with Page having his practice time cut so significantly, as Meeks is able to open the scoring for the Tar Heels. Page not practicing full time. Barry gets injured. Roy Williams basically said they had Nate Britt as the only point guard healthy for practice this week. And he can't play boy point guard going both ways. So it's a short bench in the backcourt for the Heels. Now the positive is J.P. Tokido, number 13 in blue, leads the team in assists, so he's perfectly capable of handling it from the point guard position for North Carolina. Washington tries a deep jumper. That's off the mark, and the rebound to Marcus Page. And that's a shot that he can make, but he's got to put that basketball on the floor and put some pressure on that defense. In and out for Tokido. So this is where I think North Carolina State has to be good tonight. An early transition, looking for early opportunities, but excellent in the secondary break as well. Cat Barber has it stripped away by Page. Now Cat's got to make up his mind to go. He hesitated for a moment, which allowed Page to get a hand on that basketball. From North Carolina, go right back inside to Meeks and allow him to go to work in the post. Kennedy Meeks flipped one up, and the tip follow is good for Bryce Johnson. Well, that's an area we talked about in the open. You cannot allow North Carolina to crush you on the offensive boards. When that basketball goes up, their bigs are running to the basket. Nice job by Bryce Johnson getting a good position for that offensive rebound. They rebound 45% of their <laughs> offensive misses. Number one in America in offensive rebounding percentage for North Carolina. Having said that, they're in the bottom of the national standings in defensive rebounding percentage. As Washington City, Abu is able to get one to go inside. So at both ends of the floor, it's a stark contrast rebounding-wise for Carolina. Uh, with, without a doubt. And with their size, they should be better on the defensive board with all those three guys they have across the top. Out of bounds off Kennedy Meeks. 17th all-time in wins is Roy Williams. He's piled up seven Final Fours, a couple of NCAA titles, and 318 wins at North Carolina. 
He's also won six regular season ACC titles to go along with a couple of ACC tournament titles. But he faces a challenge this year with Marcus Page, not 100%. Jump hook in and out for Kyle Washington. He missed it, but I like the play. They have to continue to explore inside North Carolina State. Nice run by Meeks. Meeks left alone at the rim, and Marcus Page found him. When the basketball's coming up the floor, everyone has to be talking to identify the ball and make sure you secure the paint. Mistake there by the Wolfpack. Nice job by Ralston Turner. <laughs> Tosses up a brick from three, though. That ends up with Bryce Johnson. See, I think sometimes Ralston Turner, because he's such a threat to knock down a three-point shot, should shot fake and get into his escape game. Tokido palmed it. Mark Gottfried will go to the bench to bring on B.J. Anya for the first time. He's taken NC State to the tournament each of his first three years here in Raleigh. He's an excellent tactician. I mean, we'll, we'll be showing you some footage later of just how good and how organized he is. I knew he was good, but having seen him over the last three years as I called the ACC, he's even better than I thought. How so? He, he just has a really good feel for the game. Being a former player, understands rest, and he understands how to take advantage of mismatches, your strengths and your weaknesses out there on the floor. He's really good at exploiting. Austin Turner with a triple. Meeks goes to work inside. Anya swats it away. Pat Barber to the bucket. Draws the foul on Tokido. This is an outstanding job by Ralston Turner. You cannot go under the ball screen. And you need some security in the paint. B.J. Anya sending it out of there. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by USAA. Proudly serving the financial needs of current and former military members and their families. It is rocking here in Raleigh as NC State now trails by a point. BJ Anya checked into the game and one trip down the floor made an impact. Yeah, watch as Kennedy Meeks turns right back that right shoulder, putting the basketball right in front of the number one shot blocker in the ACC. BJ Anya, you cannot do that. When you catch it, you got to fake to the baseline and turn back to the middle to protect the basketball with your inside shoulder. Nicely done by BJ Anja. How about four blocks for him against Duke? And that's the difference in this NC State team this year is they have rim protection in the back, which allows their guards to get up and pressure you a little bit more. It's his presence that's been the difference for this Wolfpack team. He's lost 60 pounds since last year, which has allowed him now to stay on the floor. Mm -hmm. Last year, he blocked about a shot and a half per game, which was 10th best in the ACC. He only played 12 minutes a game. He just didn't have the endurance because he was carrying that extra 60 pounds to get out there and play eight, 10 minute stretches. Now he has that ability, and that's a weapon for Mark Godfrey. Nice spin inside for Isaiah Hicks, who Roy Williams told us when that light bulb goes on, it'll yes. be bright. It has yet, though, to officially flip off. I really like Isaiah Hicks. He's got quick feet, really bouncy, and a lot of moves down in the low post. That kid's future is bright. I'd like to see a boot get another touch down in the low post. The last time he had it in the post for the Wolfpack, he scored. Pat Barber runs down the loose ball on a fresh 35 for the Wolfpack. He's got a little mismatch here at the top. I think Barber can take Justin Jackson, 44 and blue, off the bounce. Macy thought he was fouled. Gave a little sideways glance to Tim Nestor. And Nestor shook his head and said, play on. Shot clock down to eight. Ralston Turner fades away over the top of Marcus Page. Kennedy Meeks, a little too strong. Thought he was slightly bumped by Anya on the way up. That's something that the Wolfpack can continue to exploit. Ralston Turner is about 6'6 and can shoot it over the top of any of those smaller guards from, from North Carolina. That's 
the first lead for the Wolfpack as Malik Dabu knocks down a jumper. We just talked about getting a boo another touch. This kid, he's not fully hit his stride either. This kid's got a bright future for NC State. Can stick it from the outside and the low post. Speaking of which, Marcus Page as NC State went under the ball screen and he made them pay. Yeah, you can't do that. He's too good of a shooter and he waits until you go underneath and reads it beautifully. Nicely done by Marcus Page. Nice duck in by Anya. Anya bumped by Meeks, and Meeks with a long home run pass to Jackson, who draws the foul. A heck of an outlet pass from Kennedy Meeks. B.J. Anya made the wrong read. He actually had it on the inside if he would have just taken the hook over his left shoulder, but decided to turn back to the baseline, and that really put the basketball same issue right back in front of Kennedy Meeks, so a really tough shot, but how about a gorgeous outlet pass? Look a little, like a little Kevin Love there. So Meeks takes a seat as Joel James comes on for the first time. And a McDonald's All-American. Geez, who isn't for North Carolina? <laughs> right. Theo Pinson in for nice the first pass. time. And there's James. Oh! Missed the bunny with the left hand after Marcus Page found him wide open. Marcus Page encouraging him just to keep playing. He knows he made the mistake. Play on. And now the foul called on Joel James. And Saturday, the Mountaineers bring the D. They lead the nation in steals per game, but the Longhorns, they can answer with Isaiah Taylor. And then one of the best front courts in the nation, the Jayhawks take on the Cyclones. West Virginia meets Texas at 615. Kansas, Iowa State at 9. Saturday, that's a great back-to-back -back doubleheader. And the Big 12 on the home court of College Hoops. There's Joel James protecting the rim. Here comes Pinson. Leans in, draws the foul on Ralston Turner. And Theo Pinson will go to the line. And that's what Joel James does when you go back to that game against Louisville. At the end of the day, game in clutch time, he made Montrez Harrell have to change his angle on that little running hook, shot it more toward the free throw line area. He's got such long arms and good anticipation to get to the basketball. Joel James didn't play organized basketball until his sophomore year of high school. And then during his senior year of high school, when he realized what his basketball future could be, he dropped 60 pounds. Yeah. So he's still learning how to play the game as well, as is Theo Pinson, who makes one at the line. Yeah, and his development was slowed by some bone spurs that he was having in his kneecap, so just not healthy. But I'll tell you what, down around that rim, he's pretty good at blocking shots and scoring it. <laughs> Cody Martin needs some help. called on Nate Britt away from the ball. Yeah, that's, that's his be, first. That's going to be a tough matchup for Nate Britt with Trevor Lacey. Trevor Lacey 6'3", about 210 pounds, and when they run that little UCLA cut off the top, again, there's opportunities to post down low. Let's see if the Wolfpack was exploited here early. Ralston Turner along two. Ends up in the hands of Cody Martin and a fresh 35. Trevor Lacey, a contested jumper. That long rebound ends up with Bernard Freeman. Nice. Freeman, way short. Another offensive rebound. Freeman leans in. That's no good. Trying to stick it back on the dunk was Anya. And it ends up in the backcourt, run down by Ralston Turner, and a foul called on James. Wow, that's two quick fouls for Joel James, a guy who gives North Carolina tremendous rip protection on the interior. I tell you, North Carolina State has dominated the offensive boards. They haven't gotten the putbacks that they were looking for, and they've been quicker to the basketball here early than Tar Heels. Tokido back in. He'll take out Marcus Page. And you have to explain this to me. Five mm -hmm. offensive rebounds on this possession for NC State. We talked about it. North Carolina is number one in America in offensive rebounding percentage, but 213th in defense, defensive rebounding percentage. How can you be so good at one end and doing the exact same thing struggle so much at the other? Well, at times, bigs have a tendency to rely on their athleticism versus 
Another big shot by Austin Turner. You rely on your athleticism versus the fundamentals of boxing out. And so you open up lanes for guys to run to the boards, and that's exactly what's happened here in the first half for North Carolina State. The kick keeps it with North Carolina, but Austin Turner's got a couple of threes. And he has the crowd lit up as well here in Raleigh. You've got to find him. It gets him quickly and force him to put it on the floor. If you come up inside post and if they play on the inside of it, we'll turn that into a ball screen. Congratulations. Appreciate ACC it. player of the week, huh? Appreciate you it. You did good. Earn it. Keep it up. Yes, Keep sir. it up. Keep it up. Don't get pumped. And if you do, check and go back door. Check and go. And you go back door to catch it, to finish it. Here we go. Let it develop. Good, good. Cut through there hard. Good, good. Now check him. There you go, son. Better, better. Here we go. Some inside access with Wolfpack head coach Mark Godfrey and a little sample of why you think as a tactician he's underrated. Yeah, really good. Uh, he knows that North Carolina likes to deny the wings and they'll deny the pinch post or the elbow area on the free throw line. And so what he's telling his guys is to be patient with the basketball, look to cut back door. And when you cut back door, cut intentionally and hard and look for it. Hasn't materialized here early. Took it up off the screen, in and out. And it's out of bounds off Isaiah Hicks. Bryce Johnson back in for Hicks. Trevor Lacey takes a seat for the first time for the Wolfpack. Bryce Johnson doing a nice job, number 11 in blue, of denying the reversal pass. And that's what we're talking about. Kyle Washington has to come to it and cut back door to be wide open. Barber behind the back with the dribble created some space, but couldn't knock it down. Took it out of the corner. Theo Pinson. Nice Ends up left. with Washington. He finds Barber. Lays it up and in. It's been North Carolina State that's been the tougher of the two teams. Beating North Carolina, the loose balls, beating him up on the offensive backboard. Seven offensive rebounds here for North Carolina State in the first half. NC State's got the three-point lead. They're six of 19 from the field. They've got 19 attempts because <laughs> yeah. of those seven offensive rebounds. You know, it's usually North Carolina that gets a lot of possessions, a lot of second chance opportunities. But again, North Carolina State is winning the toughness part of the game right now. That's a touch foul on Ralston Turner. That's his second. So let's see if Mark Gottfried goes to the bench and he will once again. He'll bring Trevor Lacey back in. And now he'll sit Ralston Turner down with two fouls. Well, and that's big because now you lose a prolific three point shooter. And now puts a lot of pressure on Cody Martin, number 15, in white, as well as Anthony Cat Barber, number 12, to produce some offense from the, for them from the backcourt. Turner has eight of the Wolfpack's 15, but now he sits. Pinson, line drive three, in and out. Hubert on the offensive glass draws the foul. So Desmond Hubert will go to the line. It's a really nice read by Desmond Hubert. The basketball goes up. He sees Anya not locating bodies, and that's really what hurts North Carolina on the defensive board, finding a really nice angle to get in there for that offensive rebound. Doesn't get to play a whole lot, Bob. He struggles at times with his confidence, but the athleticism is there, the ability to run up and down the floor. He's got to make his impact on that offensive glass. And he tosses up two bricks at the free throw line. Well, Joel Berry hurt. He wondered where those minutes would trickle down to for North Carolina. And Desmond Hubert getting some time here in the first half, a good example of who has to pick up the slack 
for Roy Williams. Yeah, I think this is an opportunity to get B.J. Anya a touch inside with this thinner front line here of the Tar Heels. Tokido ends up with that pinball rebound. The lob. Hubert goes back door and does a good job to gather and find Bryce Johnson. Now it's Tokido. And he's able to finish with the right hand. He plays with such great poise. A guy who got off to a great start this year is assist. He's always good with assisting guys for baskets. Low turnovers. Then he went through a phase where he's really turning it over a lot. Two back-to-back -back games where he turned it over six times. He needs to really settle down and not try to make the home run pass. Cheap foul on Bryce Johnson. And a silly foul bumping Kyle Washington as he was on his way to set a screen. Yeah, I love the energy, the athleticism of J.P. Tokido, one of my favorite players in the country because of how hard he plays. For him to go to the next level, he's got to become a better offensive rebounder, using that athleticism to get second chance opportunities for his team. Washington in traffic with the left hand is able to knock one down. That's his first bucket. Washington plays with a lot of confidence. You won't see him put his head down after missing a few baskets. Tokido was able to keep it alive. A near steal nice. by Trevor Lacey. And by keeping it alive, that allows Justin Jackson to finish. A nice play by J.P. Tokido to avoid the Carolina turnover. And Justin Jackson doing a really nice job of moving without the basketball. His defender lost vision, which allowed him to make a little back cut. Beautiful find underneath. See, I think with Desmond Hubert, number 14, guarding B.J. Anya down in the post, I think they should run some misdirection action, allow Anya to duck in. He'll have an easy opportunity against one of the thinner frontline players for Carolina. Offensive rebound for Anya, stripped away. And they'll say it goes to Carolina. It looked like it might have bounced maybe off the foot of Justin Jackson. So the Wolfpack on the strip away of Anya lose possession. Let's take another look. Got a shield that couldn't quite see it, but ah, that may have hit it off of his knee. I think that's a good call. Yeah, the crowd thought, and it looked even from our angle like it might have glanced off Jackson on its way out of bounds, but that view certainly made it seem like a good call. Bryce Johnson, number 11 for the Tar Heels, has to be more aggressive on the offensive end for the Tar Heels. Justin Jackson throws it away. We've got a one-point game here in the first half. I'm Dan Burke alongside Dan Dockett. back in our college basketball studios. Notre Dame and Georgia Tech coach Chris Bolden here for the three. Georgia Tech looks good. Yeah, Georgia Tech looks really good. Zach Austin out, or August, excuse me, out. That's a big loss for Notre Dame, 14 tonight. Also, Rutgers and Maryland right now. Rutgers is leading this game just by a couple of points, so we'll keep you posted on what is going on. Back to Bob with shoes and Alfonso Ellis. Guys? And then thanks very much. It's a one-point lead for NC State over North Carolina. Under eight minutes to go in the first half. And as you heard, Georgia Tech close to a double-digit lead over Notre Dame in the first half of that game. No Zach August now for Notre Dame for who knows how long because of academics. Yeah, that's got to be deflating for the team. Nice pass. And able to finish, though, as Kyle Washington challenged inside by Bryce Johnson and Kennedy Meeks. But Zach August is also a vital screener on the ball screen action, which frees Notre Dame's guards up to get into the gaps. The shot clock was reset, and that, I think, is why Brian Dorsey wants to go over to the scorer's table, because it didn't look as if that attempt by Kyle Washington hit the rim, but the shot clock reset on that field goal attempt. And they're now going to put the shot clock all the way down to 15 seconds. It's a good call. Clearly that basketball didn't hit the rim. Still plenty of time for the Wolfpack with 15 to shoot. A turnover by Abu. Smoothly to the goal, and that puts the heels back on top by a point. And that's the one thing you can't do against this North Carolina team. You can't give them freebies because they can be explosive in transition. 
See, this is what hurts with Ralston Turner picking up that second foul. Their offense gets a little cautious. I think this guy here has to be more aggressive when he gets it down in the low post. So that sucks from Kyle Washington. He's got four. Five lead changes in the first 13 plus minutes. And now a foul called on Bryce Johnson, setting the moving screen. That's his second. Kyle Washington plays with an enormous amount of confidence. When he can get that right shoulder turns towards you, he loves to shoot that little hook shot. Teams try to keep him from going over there, but he just is almost abusive as he's trying to get over that right shoulder, and he's really good to that little hook shot. They need more of that kind of contribution from Kyle Washington if they're hoping to get an upset win against Carolina. Players come off that ball screen, have to look back. The guy rolling is wide open. Rainbow three hit the backboard first for Trevor Lacey. Lacey is off. He has yet to score. 0 for 4 from the field. Pulling his way inside, though, is Kennedy Meeks. Well, Bob, that's something that we mentioned earlier about North Carolina on misses, pushing the basketball, looking for early opportunities. That's really nice execution, and that speaks to Meeks' fitness. He's been running the floor extremely well for Carolina. Beautifully executed on that play. Abu rejected by Meeks. Now, Kennedy Meeks, according to Roy Williams, having lost the 50 pounds and reshaping his body, you'd think it would be just a straight advantage for him? Oh, without a doubt, doing a phenomenal job of running the floor and creating space. More big should do that, but he's also a rim protector as well, much more athletic. We talked to Coach earlier. He said that he hasn't quite gotten used to being a lot lighter because he's so much more explosive. He can jump now on the shot. Nice move. There's the first bucket for Trevor Lacey as the shooter goes to the rim and is able to score. Meeks draws the foul. I thought the point that Roy Williams made about Kennedy Meeks, though, that was interesting was how, and you touched on it, he's still learning how to use the body that he has created. I would think, just from the novice perspective, that if he lost 50 pounds, he'd just be better. But Roy Williams said, yeah, try to learn how to be better. With, without a doubt, and I tell people, try to get a 40 pound, wow, nice shot. <laughs> <laughs> he could have played, probably could have played any better defense than that, but you have to get into his shooting pocket and force him to put it on the floor. But try tying a 40-pound salt bag around your waist and carry that around for a day. Many moms out there understand what that feels like, and then take it off and see how much lighter you feel. It really does impact you, and as Meeks gets more comfortable in his body, he's going to be a beast down in the low post. Kyle Washington selling some range from the corner, and we're tied at 23. Kyle Washington, three of six now, four of seven over the last three games from three. That's a shot he can make, especially from the corners. Page, the old school floater, in and out. And it belongs to the Wolfpack. to work Kyle Washington, either from the elbow area or from the low post. Tapped around on the miss from Washington. Anya kept it alive. There's Washington on the offensive glass looking for the Lacey miss. But it's taken away, and here comes Britt. Justin Jackson lost his balance. It's a turnover. Killer Martin, number 14 in white, doing a terrific job of moving his feet. And that's what you try to teach young people, is if you can imagine yourself as a blocking board to keep the ball handler in front of you, excellent execution there from Caleb Martin. And those are the kind of plays that'll get him more minutes. His minutes lately have been diminishing. Against Duke, he gave up six straight points and didn't go back in the game after that. His brother has been taking a lot more of his minutes, but those are the winning plays that can get him more playing time on the floor. Marcus Page back on the Carolina bench. Still dealing with that plantar fasciitis and a sprained right ankle that he suffered against Louisville as well. Moving screen 
called against Kyle Washington. Tied here in Raleigh. I'm Adnan Ver coming up in the Land Rover Halftime Report. The Devils feeling blue. Dan Dockett to explain the issues right now with Coach K's defense and how to improve that. Plus, George Tech right now giving Notre Dame a good fight. We'll have highlights coming up at the half. All that plus plenty more. Bob LaFonso, back to you guys. All right, Adnan, thanks very much. We are tied at 23, under four minutes to go in the first half here. A little civil war in Raleigh between North Carolina and NC State, Papa Shusen here with Lafonso Ellis. 11 offensive rebounds for NC State. They're shooting 33% from the field, but all of those extra possessions have them in a 23-23 tie with a Carolina team that's shooting 53%. Well, we heard it from Mark Gottfried in that little piece that we showed early, earlier. He said, don't let them punk you. Bring the fight, and they've certainly done that, especially on the boards. Marcus Page has eight points here early, but they've been able to neutralize this North Carolina team on the boards by only allowing two second chance points for a team that leads the country in that area. Benson got it inside, and Isaiah Hicks able to finish. So a couple of young players, a freshman and a sophomore, combined to give Carolina the lead. A nice recognition there by North Carolina, recognizing the 2 3 zone and getting right into their zone buster offense. Austin Turner still on the NC State bench with two fouls as well. And we'll see if at some point Mark Godfrey brings him back in. That runner and a soft touch for Caleb Martin. I really like those Martin twins. Both of those guys really athletic, unafraid to put the basketball on the floor. Caleb Martin more of a scorer than his brother, and they could use that scoring from his position right now with Austin Turner with two fouls out of the game. Poke it up. Draws a foul. I'd love to hear his maturation process. Tokido at times in the past would kind of force his will on the game, which I think led to a lot of turnovers and some bad shots. This year, as I've watched him, he's really patient and poised, letting it come to him and taking advantage of his ball handling ability and athleticism to get to the right. MVP, the Splash Brothers, Lob City, the king for fans of NBA's brightest stars. This is your night. NBA countdown at 7.30 before Warriors Thunder at 8, Cavs Clippers at 10.30. And that's your NBA Friday doubleheader on ESPN. I tell you, if you've not had a chance to watch Golden State, you should. Steve Kerr's got those guys running some beautiful offense. Speaking of guards, Benny Del Negro is pretty good. Played for the San Antonio Spurs during my day as a nugget. Hard to guard. Scratch golfer, too. That's not fair. What? You can't be in the NBA and be a scratch golfer. Uh, he is. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> Those of us that have zero athleticism feel like you really only are supposed to be good at one sport at a time. As Marcus Page comes back in, it's another look at Vinny Del Negro. And that foul, by the way, on Kyle Washington was his second. So he's now on the bench with two as well. So Turner and Washington, those are the two leading scorers for NC State as Malik Abu will go to the line, both on the bench with two fouls apiece. And you start to question where's the offense coming going to come from for the Wolfpack. But they have some guys that are making some plays that ordinarily don't. Abu, you know he's got a lot of talent. It's going to be good one day, but he's been passive on the offensive end. Tonight he's really been looking to attack. And it's something that the Wolfpack has de have desperately need, especially with Ralston Turner on the bench. Malik Abu only shoots 47% at the line. Only a freshman. He was number 32 on our ESPN 100 as the recruiting continues to get better and better yeah. here at NC State for Mark Godfrey. And Abu's had to make an adjustment. I mean, he's used to being the biggest dog in the yard, so to speak, and now he's got guys who are equally as, le as athletic and big, so his transition has been slow, but he's starting to come along. Needs to become a better free throw shooter, though. 47% is not going to cut it for a guy that's going to get to the line relatively often. Agreed. Two minutes to go in the first half. Both point guards on the floor now. Page and Britt. Now for North Carolina, but it's the big man that play playmaker as Kennedy Meeks is able to get it to Isaiah Hicks. 
Isaiah Hicks was in the perfect position to be a receiver as Meeks was double teamed. When you double team down low, you have to take away the passer's vision. The Wolfpack didn't, and they were exploited on the offensive end. So I think with 129 to go for the Wolfpack here. The basketball has to get to Trevor Lacey, number one there in white, or Abu has been pretty good when he's caught the basketball zero in white up in that elbow area. Barber on the drive, slipped. And a little bit too deep there. Made red around the screen, and that's pinned by Abu. Freeman waits for help. It's Lacey for three. Air ball. And Kennedy Meeks rebounds again. Lacey's shot has been short tonight. I think early having J.P. Tokido with some five yards on his really hurt him, but this kid Hicks continues to make a positive impact on the floor for Carolina. And then Trevor Lacey has something to say about the collision afterwards. No harm, no fouls. The officials don't rule a foul on either team. Oh, he's submarined him. That is an uncomfortable feeling for an athlete to be up in the air and have someone go underneath. You just lose all control, and it's it's very awkward. Fortunate not to get injured on that play. Lacey's got to touch the basketball. Gonna look down on him. You can post him up right now. Working on Nate Britt through a double team out to Barber. That three's off the mark. Offensive rebound for Caleb Martin. And he draws a foul. Again, Bob, that's something that I really love about the Martin brothers. They are very aggressive getting to the offensive glass and that's been an area that the Wolfpack have really exploited tonight for North Carolina. North Carolina's inability and unwillingness to box people out has opened up some lanes for the Wolfpack to get to and they've really dominated the offensive board here in the first half something that North Carolina typically does to their opponent. Freshman twins as you saw for NC State played at Oak Hill. Caleb at the free throw line Cody on the bench. And Mark Godfrey told us they both play really hard and they both play with an edge mm -hmm. in a good way. And that probably, I would assume, comes from the competitive nature of them playing against each other. <laughs> that if they make a play, one way or the other, they're going to let you know about it. Yeah, and I think that's come to fruition here because, again, the younger brother is cutting into the older brother's minutes here. And Caleb Martin really need a night like tonight to get back in the good graces of Mark Godfrey after making a few mistakes against Duke. He's been aggressive and confident. Here in this first half. And when you say younger and older, Cody's older by one minute. <laughs> Brent on the drive, softly off the glass. North Carolina's hit nine of their last 11 from the field. But if it goes for Barber, it does not. And in spite of the fact that North Carolina allowed 12 offensive rebounds in the first half, they still have a six point lead because their big men are getting it done down low outscoring NC State by 10 in the paint and it's a six point lead at halftime for number 15 North Carolina over the Wolfpack. Now it's time to go back to the studio. Adnan Burt, Dan Dockich, they're standing by with the Land Rover halftime report. Adnan. to the ACC on ESPN and welcome back to Raleigh set for the start of the second half it's a six point lead for North Carolina over NC State Bob with shoes and Lafonso Ellis with you and found some of the storylines played out in the first half just the way that we expected Carolina struggled on the defensive glass NC State with 12 offensive rebounds Carolina also outscoring them by 10 in the paint some of the storylines, not the way we expected. <laughs> now, Trevor Lacey, only one for seven from yeah. the field. He's fourth in the conference. 
in scoring. So especially for NC State to come from behind, what has to change in the second half? They have to change the number of points in the paint that they're allowing. Now they did a nice job of not allowing them to get second chance opportunities. Only two for North Carolina, but this is the area that North Carolina has flexed their muscle. They were able to get to the basket, making extra passes underneath. Nice one-on-one -on -one plays in the post as well. 18 points in the paint, and when they have it going inside, and now they get it going outside, they are tough to beat Marcus Page delivering time and time again in the first half. A guy who's usually more of a second half guy, but eight points in the first half, really relaxed and letting the game come to him. They really had a nice balanced first half, but another area that they missed out on North Carolina State, when Ralston Turner picked up his seventh, his second foul at 10-19, they were up three points, now down six and a half, and they desperately need him on the offensive end. Turner misses his first shot to start the second half, but Malik Abu is there to tap it home. And it's a four-point game, and that is the 13th offensive rebound for NC State. Opportunities to try to get it to the bigs. Nicely done. That's a beautiful slip there by Bryce Johnson. That's now eight points, five assists, no turnovers for Marcus Page. He's really been, and to be able to do that with plantar fasciitis, folks, it feels like someone's cutting the bottom of your foot with a razor. To be able to play with that kind of efficiency with that kind of injury is very difficult to do. Marcus Page is focused tonight. And he gets the deflection on the entry pass. But then a turnover as Trevor Lacey is able to save it. Here comes Barber. Pat Barber with the left hand, a little too strong, but there's offensive rebound. Number 14 for NC State. Kyle Washington now has eight. It's a really nice job by Kyle Washington, not giving up on the play. Read it perfectly coming off the front of the rim. A soft touch from Justin Jackson. Bob, I said early in the year that if Justin Jackson becomes that second score consistently for North Carolina, they are going to be very tough to beat. Trevor Lacey in and out. He's now one for eight from the field. Kennedy Meeks with the left hand comes up short over Abu. Tell you, Abu has done a nice job down in the low post. North Carolina's bigs have had a tough time scoring over him. He does a nice job of getting low, getting his chest on you, and then challenging at the last moment. Watch number zero in white here. You see how he doesn't give a, give you an angle to the basket, and then once you go up, then he goes up. Nicely done by the freshman. Ralston Turner, quick trigger. Off the mark. Well, he didn't miss very many of those. He was wide open. I think he's one of the best in the country at working off screens. Nice find. Kennedy Meeks off the feed from Justin Jackson. It's the largest UNC lead up to eight. Well, I said in the first half that when those ball screens are being set, the roll guy is wide open. North Carolina doing a great job of IDing the open guy underneath. North Carolina State's going to have to change their package. They may want to blitz or make sure that they get someone over to take away the roll guy. Washington spins baseline. Back to that natural left-handed jump ball. He sold that beautifully to the baseline, but you got another scouting report. He is coming back to that right shoulder. Bryce Johnson, a little baby jumper off the flip from Page. Another assist for Marcus Page. Talking to Coach Williams, and, and I agree, Bryce Johnson has to be more aggressive when he catches that basketball 12 feet in. He's a guy that can rise over the top, and there's not a big in the country who can challenge him because he shoots it with a high release point, and he jumps so high off the floor. A three goes down for Kyle Washington. He's in double figures with 13. The Wolfpack is a different team when Kyle Washington is aggressive on the offensive end. Tokido can't answer. Kennedy Meeks, though, was able to muscle his way inside, and that creates the foul. That's Ralston Turner. That's his third. Wow. So with three and a half minutes gone by in the second half, Mark Gottfried is now presented with a similar problem that he had in the first half. What do you do with Ralston Turner? Yeah, I, I think you got to leave him right now for the confidence and the psyche of their team. He's an older guy, red shirt senior. He should be able to keep himself out of foul trouble. It's a little easier for a wing. 
Duck in by Kennedy Meeks. He's in double figures for the 13th time this season. He's got 10. I think North Carolina has done the best job that I've seen them on film being patient and finding their bigs when their bigs are in the painted area. Turner for three. Got it. NC State will continue to stay in this 2-3 zone. The soft spot is in the middle. The ACC, if Carolina can get it there, they'll find some opportunities. Oh, get it to Marcus Page. That's a pretty good answer. <laughs> Marcus Page. He might be working on a point assist double-double. He's got 11 points to go along with seven assists. He has been lights out tonight. And we'll see going forward if North Carolina State comes out of that zone because of the danger of Page knocking down shots. Turner can't hit. Meeks throws it off a of boo who keeps it alive. Tokido knocked it out of bounds. All of a sudden in the second half. The outside shooting starting to heat up both ways. Really starting to heat up, and this is what Ralston Turner does. One of the best in the ACC at shooting a three. Mr. Page says, you got to know, I'm clutch in the second half. Our game tonight is part of my home court, our week-long celebration of some of the great college basketball arenas around the country. And it is rocking inside PNC Arena tonight. But of course, when Jimmy V was on the sidelines for NC State, they're playing over at Reynolds Coliseum, where they still play select home games. NC State's home court from 1949 through 1999 since the year 2000. NC State 14 and one at Reynolds Coliseum. They are 11 and one in this building this year. Phenomenal with what they do. Is that a David Thompson sighting? I was uh, drafted in 1992 to the Denver Nuggets, and uh, he still has his jersey hanging from the ceiling. One of the all-time Denver Nugget greats. Boy, could he score it. DJ nice Anya, pass. nice find. Wide open underneath was Cody Martin. DJ has become so patient when he catches the basketball down in the box, and it was his patience which allowed him to find his teammate underneath for an easy lay-in. of Nate Britt. Eighth Carolina turnover. P.J. Anya doing a nice job of being patient when he catches it. Look at the vision finding Martin underneath. And nice job by Martin of getting to a really good passing angle for B.J. to make the pass. Good execution there by the Wolfpack. 12-footer off the mark for Washington. Now an offensive foul called <laughs> on B.J. Anya. <laughs> As he took Joel James and shoved him out. That's hard to do. <laughs> Saturday, we've got two Hall of Fame coaches colliding. An epic battle between a couple of top five teams. Duke looking to avoid a three-game losing streak as they head to Louisville to take on the Cardinals. Saturday at noon on ESPN, part of our journey to the tourney. Presented by Sonic as we continue to spotlight teams and games all season long. That could impact the tournament as B.J. Anya picked up his third foul. He stays on the floor for NC State. Got to get the basketball to the middle of the floor. A takeaway by Ralston Turner. And he's able to finish. 13 for Turner. Jumper off the mark for James, but a back tap keeps it alive. Bryce Johnson unable to hit this page. Another offensive rebound. That's rejected inside as Bryce Johnson had it thrown back. Trevor Lacey high off the glass. That won't go. And it's corralled underneath by Bryce Johnson. BJ Anya. Wow. Page with an answer. And just like that, it's a six-point lead 
for North Carolina again. And a little miscommunication there for the Wolfpack. They didn't know whether they should be in zone or in man. You had guys looking around for each other. You cannot do that, especially with Marcus Page. He's an outstanding shooter with his feet set. You'd have to think if there's one guy you're going to find. Bryce <laughs> yeah. nice Johnson put two hands on to Kyle Washington. That's Johnson's third. Trevor Lacey has to get going here. Number one in white. He's got to knock down some shots for North Carolina State if they're hoping to win this game. He heard you. Only the second field goal for Trevor Lacey, who averages just a shade under 17 per game. Meeks can't hit. A long rebound to Lacey. Cody Martin lost it on the way up. Washington there though to clean it up for the Wolfpack. And it's a two-point game. Up Brick comes up short, Henson an offensive rebound, and that rolls home for the freshman Theo Pinson. Sometimes you can relax when you're in the zone, and you wow, nice hey, with the finger roll, a nice open. Tell you, I love how the bigs from North Carolina State run the floor. A nice job by the guards keeping their eyes up to find them. Page finds Meeks. Score the basket plus the foul for Kennedy Meeks. And it's another assist for Marcus Page, his eighth of the night. Malik Abu making his presence known on the interior. UNC has struggled against this 2-3 zone, but this is the way you beat it. Dribble penetration to the middle. Nice find underneath the Meeks. Dan Burke alongside Dan Dockage up to Neo and Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. This is Steve Vastoria here for three. It's a tight one. Yeah, you Notre Dame making a little comeback here. They've got to get Jerry and Grant going. He only has four points to this part. Also, Rutgers and Maryland Curley. Rutgers has a 51-48 lead against a Maryland team that's 14th in the country. Bob, Fonz, back to you guys. And thanks very much. Four-point lead for North Carolina. Fonz takes us inside the play. Yeah, you want to, against the 2-3 zone, attack the ACC area. And so as Marcus Page has the basketball here, he wants to attack that area, and it forces this big back here for North Carolina State to have to step up, and it creates a little alley underneath to be able to make that pass to Meeks. Beautiful execution against the 2-3 zone. Meeks couldn't finish the three-point play chance, though. So it remains a four-point Carolina lead. Lacey along the baseline draws a blocking foul. So Isaiah Hicks tried to take the charge, but he gets called for the foul. That's the second team foul on Carolina here in the second half. The first on Hicks. Only three team fouls on NC State nearing the midway point of the second half. So in spite of the fact this has been an up-and-down game, and a rivalry game in an intense atmosphere, these officials have done a really good job of letting these two teams play. Lacey hits the front end. And Bob, as I've been watching some of the bigger games throughout the country all year long, they have been doing just that. I think the officials have done a magnificent job, especially this year when you have so many bigs who are impactful. The bigs from Kentucky, from Texas, here with Carolina, and with North Carolina State. I think they're doing a really good job of allowing them to get away with some of those things that they typically would call like hand checks. X forces one up and gets it to fall. Tell you, Hicks has given North Carolina a tremendous lift off the bench. Had eight off the bench in the first half. Now 10 points for that young man. He's got a big future ahead of him. He's really been coming on, starting to feel the game more now. Tough fade away. He's got it. Eight points for Trevor Lacey. Wow. 
missed Isaiah Hicks, number 22 in blue. When you hit that short corner, the big can dive down, and he'll be wide open if you can find him. Skip pass, and it's Marcus Page that gets the edge. His floater won't go. And it's run down in the corner by Cody Martin. I think you got to get Ralston Turner, 22 and white, involved in the offense. Get him coming off some screens to create some separation to get some good shots. A boo across the lane, had it stripped away. Justin Jackson leans in. Score the basket plus the foul, a chance for a three-point play for Justin Jackson. Bob, I love when North Carolina is playing this way. This is their game when they're getting out in transition, looking for early opportunities. And even if they don't get it, the secondary break is available, but Justin Jackson doing a nice job of showing some poise. Little hesitation dribble there to get the defender on the side and strong finish at the rim. And now things really get interesting for Mark Godfrey. That's the fourth foul on Ralston Turner. He sits down. Trevor Lacey also just went to the bench as Caleb Martin comes back in. So both of the twins are now on the floor. The freshman for NC State, Cody and Caleb Martin along with Cat Barber and kind of a three guard look. And where do the points come from now for the Wolfpack with Lacey and Turner out? Well, Caleb Martin, number 14 here in white, he's your perimeter jump shooter. And so if they can get him moving off some screens and also look for some duck down, duck in opportunities, especially with Abu and with BJ Anya, 21 in white. I think right now is the time for them to go more inside than outside because obviously you've lost some tremendous shooting with Ralston Turner over there on the bench with Trevor Lacey. Looks like Tim Nestor, one of the officials, saw a wet spot on the floor. it taken away by Tokido. Tokido swoops in with big ups, scores, plus the foul, a chance for another North Carolina old-fashioned three-point play. This is an explosive transition team. J.P. Tokido doing a nice job of taking, and look at the explosion to the rim. Wow. This kid does so many things for this North Carolina team, leads them in assists. He can get out and create deflections. Willing passer in an area of this game that's really improved is his perimeter jump shot. Worked with assistant coach Hubert Davis, who was a tremendous shooter in his own right back in the day to get that elbow in. And he shot that 15-footer with a lot more consistency this year than last. That's the fourth foul on B.J. Anya. So he sits with four. Turner on the bench with four. And Mark Godfrey gets Trevor Lacey back in the game as both twins Take a break. Caleb and Cody Martin both out of the game. Kyle Washington comes back in for the Wolfpack. And Desmond Lee for the first time is able to get it. Desmond Lee is an outstanding defender, but I think he's another guy that can provide some offense. But you got to get him moving to knock down that little 15-foot jump shot that he can knock down. Trevor Lacey for three. And he makes clears. This game's in a danger area right now for North, Car for North Carolina State. No question about it. Kennedy meets, goes back door. A great look from Tokido. It's the largest lead for North Carolina. And Mark Gottfried calls a timeout. North Carolina State still in that 2-3 zone. That's a nice cut by Meeks underneath. J.P. Tokido with a gorgeous delivery. Give it to the big fella Meeks. He knows what to do with it down low. Marcus Page with nine assists. J.P. Tokido with five. As Lafonso takes us inside the play. Watch as the ball reverses to the wing here. Nice little duck in underneath, occupying the center, which creates this little alley to, for Meeks to go down. J.P. Tokido always with his eyes up, finds a cutting Meeks. Another beautiful possession executed by North Carolina against the zone. I think NC State's got to come out of that zone and play man. North Carolina has burned them on the last five possessions while they've been in that 2-3 zone. Washington out of the double team sets up a boo, but that's a little bit outside his range. The back tap, though, and a new possession for NC State. 
and they need more from Trevor Lacey. He is three of 12 from the field. Again, the fourth leading scorer in the ACC. He's only got eight, especially with Turner on the bench in foul trouble. He and Kyle Washington, 32 and White, have to carry the offense for this team while Ralston Turner is on the bench. Saturday, the Mountaineers will bring the D, you know that. They lead the nation in steals per game. They'll take on the 20th ranked Texas Longhorns. And then a terrific front court playing like it for Kansas as they meet Iowa State. West Virginia, Texas kicks off a great Big 12 doubleheader at 6.15. Kansas, Iowa State at 9 Saturday on ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Barber threw it away. A takeaway by Marcus Pick. And you cannot have turnovers when you're down 10. That foul on Kyle Washington. That's his third. So Ralston Turner's coming back in. Here's the button being pushed by Mark Godfrey. It looks like BJ Anya is coming back in as well. So he obviously thinks that this is now that crucible moment of the game. 10 point lead. Both players with four fouls back on the floor for the Wolf. Well, for the confidence psychologically, they got to get a stop here. And he went back with a couple of his best defenders, but also some guys who can give him some offense. And they post up on you. Well, James can't hit, but there on the offensive glass with a flush is Isaiah Hicks. And the lead swells to 12. And Two guys can't run at James. I will give him an opportunity to score down in the low post because what you do when you come and you bring too many guys, it opens up the backside. It's ready beautifully. Foul called on James away from the ball. Isaiah Hicks came in with a reputation of a prolific scorer. It's been a little quiet, but has really exerted himself on this game, doing a phenomenal job for the Tar Heels. Marcus Page is one assist away from a point assist double double. He has been spectacular on the road tonight here in Rock. Yeah, in, in both halves, a guy who came in four of his last 15 from three, 35% from the field over the last two games. He found his rhythm early, knocking down open shots. And you can't leave a guy like Marcus Page. He's playing at an elite level right now. Confidence through the roof, four of four from the three point line. 14 points to go along with nine assists, no turnovers. Well, one of Marcus Page. Yeah, part one. Part of emphasis coming into this game with our focus is neutralizing the impact of Marcus Page. Got off to a quick start with eight points in the first half, six here in the second. But again, the patience, the poise, finding open guys. To your point, no turnovers in this game. Exceptional. At number five in blue. Austin Turner hit the backboard first. I'm Bob Wachusen alongside LaFonso Ellis. And it has been an off night for the star guards for the NC State Wolfpack. But now a foul called on Isaiah Hicks. So that gives it back to NC State. Do you think the Wolfpack, though, have a run in them in the last seven and a half minutes if Lacey and Turner continue to struggle? Yeah, I, I'd be surprised that on their home floor that Lacey and Turner don't start knocking down some shots to give themselves a chance here. But I think more importantly, I think B.J. Anya has got to get on that offensive glass and give his team an opportunity to get some shots and to get some points down in the post. He's posting hard. Desmond Lee not looking at him on the inside. Now Lacey finds Anya. And the baby hook goes. That ends what was a 10-0 Carolina run. That has lasted about the last three minutes. Don't you love it when you say something that goes your way? They make you look good, don't they? You rarely look bad. Bryce Johnson on the duck and on you. He's called for the foul, and that will end his night. And that is a tough one for NC State to swallow. Wow. That is huge for the Wolfpack. Wow, I couldn't see it from his angle. If there's any contact, let's look at the, yeah, get them a little bump inside. But to your point, they've been allowing this year the bigs to play inside, and I don't think there was enough there to blow the whistle. Yeah, that wasn't the foul that they called. That initial bump, I don't think that was the foul. I think the foul was called on the shot block, saying that he got a little bit of the hand or a little bit of the wrist. Wow. And looking at the replay, that looks pretty clean. Yes. 
And that's huge for the Wolfpack because now they lose an element of that interior rim protection that's been so good because he and Kyle Washington have been extraordinary over the last couple of games, really controlling the paint area. Now you lose the best shot blocker in the ACC. Talking to Coach Williams before the game, he wants Bryce Johnson to be more aggressive on the offensive end. He's got all the tools, tremendous lift, can shoot it from 15, nice post game. They need more of that if they're hoping to hang a national championship banner at Carolina. Boston Turner, way short. As you can see, the three guards for NC State giving them half tonight of what they normally get. But here's a steal by Trevor Lacey. Loose in the backcourt. How about the hustle? Marcus Page comes up with the loose ball and gets the timeout ball. Marcus Page, when your best player on your team is giving up his body the way he's doing, it is inspiring. Carolina playing inspired basketball in the second half. Some news and notes that play into tonight's game. Obviously, Virginia undefeated their best start since Ralph Sampson was playing in the paint. Duke has lost two in a row. The first of those two losses was here over the weekend to NC State. So the Wolfpack right now trying to run a gauntlet as they played on the road at Virginia. And there's a chance for a three-point play for Desmond Lee. They played at Virginia, then they came back home and played home against Duke. Now their third straight top 15 team taking on North Carolina at home tonight. Yeah. They're one and one in the first two games. And, and an amazing stretch for this team. But we talked about earlier Desmond Lee being a guy who can provide some offense, especially off the bounce. That was a much needed bucket there. That foul on Bryce Johnson, his fourth. Well, that's the first player with four for North Carolina. Ooh, gamble there. You don't want to gamble. And that gave Johnson some room, but he missed the bunny. Here comes Desmond Lee. Six minutes to go. Got to find Lacey. Got to find Ralston Turner here in the half court. I know they've not been hot, but I can't imagine them continuing to be cold here in money time because number one with the basketball, Trevor Lacey, is a clutch score. Lacey fouled by Tokido. That's the third on Tokido and the seventh on Carolina. So it's a one and one as both teams are now over the limit. If I'm NC State, when you find yourself in the bonus with the kind of talent that they have on this team, they've got to attack the rim. And if they attack it hard, they'll either get layups, get fouled, or be able to find open shooters on the weak side of the floor. AC trying to get the double figures for the 14th time this season. He's got 10. BJ Anya has fouled out. Austin Turner on the floor with four. And the lead down to eight. From the corner, an air ball tossed up by Justin Jackson. Mm. And it's out of bounds off of Lenard Freeman. Wow, I thought that ball actually touched Meeks from my angle, but that's why we have a little replay to take a look at it. This missed by a mile. Well, maybe hit Freeman's fingertip there at the very end. North Carolina needs to settle down here against this pressure. They're playing way too fast in the last four possessions. Tokeno sets up Johnson, who uses the window. Well, we said all game that the roll guy has been open for North Carolina after setting the screen. Nice find by Tokeno. Lacey, tough shot, draws the foul. So a chance for Trevor Lacey at the line. Well, folks, the roll guy has been open all night long. Nice green there by Bryce Johnson. And this is what I was talking about, the package that this guy possesses. There's not much he can't do on the floor. He's a shot blocker, terrific rebounder, and he shoots that thing with such a high release point, it is difficult to get to. And now he's out. That's his fifth. So North Carolina loses Bryce Johnson. Mm -hmm. 
Now with the way Isaiah Hicks, 22 in blue, has played tonight, you know, you miss Bryce Johnson, but Isaiah Hicks has given him a tremendous lift. So Carolina doesn't lose much tonight as they typically would in the past because Hicks' confidence continues to grow, and he's had a really good night offensively for the Tar Heels. Whatever you do, do not leave Marcus Page. NC State has the best on-ball defender right now in Lee on Page. A duck in by Hicks. Blocked from behind. Out of bounds. Nine seconds on the shot clock. It stays with the heels. Kyle Washington does a tremendous job on the low post of keeping the offensive post player in his chest and challenging late. Nicely done by Kyle Washington. They did exactly what you said they couldn't do. They left Marcus Page with just a little bit of room, and another three goes down. He's made all five that he's tried tonight. Only can give him one way to go. Got caught up on that screen, Desmond Lee. No communication from the bigs. Lee was nailed on that screen, creating that airspace for Page. A dagger three by Marcus Page. Tokido commits the foul. That's his fourth. That'll put Trevor Lacey back on the line. But here's the step out by Page. The most dangerous player on an out-of-bounds play is the guy that makes the inbounds pass. Desmond Lee. Allowed too much space, nailed by a screen that created that open air for Page to get that shot off. You cannot allow Marcus Page to get shots off late in the game. He is a big shot maker and has been in his career for North Carolina. He liked playing here at Raleigh or what? Last year, North Carolina beat NC State in this building 85-84 in overtime. T.J. Warren had 36. <laughs> Page had 35. And 31 of his 35 in the second half. Well, he's had a penchant last year, this year, of scoring more in the second half than he's done in the first. I feel like this has been the most balanced I've seen him in a while with eight points in the first half, but he's been clutch here in the second. If you're the Wolfpack, you want to continue to apply a little pressure trying to get North Carolina to play a little quicker. And you see the numbers there from Marcus Page, astounding what he does in the first and second halves of games. He was just as good in the first half tonight as he has been in the second half. And as you can see, that's not been his trend this year. Yeah, the best start I've seen him get in a long time in the first half of this game. Well, the Wolfpack have to get some stops in the last four minutes down by nine. I like the substitution here, bringing in Cody Martin, number 15, a little longer, a little more athletic, a little quicker to be able to run page off those days. Page again gets tripped up and a foul called on Cody Martin. That's his second. Marcus Page shoots free throws when we come back. Hi, Dan Burke back in our studio. An update right now on the Wizards and the Bulls over on ESPN. Look at Derek Rose. Half court shot. He's got 17 points right now. Give me a stage where this bull here can rage. Chicago, a six-point lead right now, as he's been great. Just a reminder, coming up next here on ESPN 2, 17 and a half minutes away from Kevon Looney. He's got 42 points. His last two games should be fun. UCLA at USC. Bob, back to you. Adnan, thanks very much. 3.46 to go. And North Carolina's got their star with a nine-point lead at the free throw line. Marcus Page has put on another shot. To add to his total tonight, points, nine rebounds, and we expect much of the same from two of the top teams in the nation. The Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy, a part of my home court, Duke Louisville, Saturday at noon on ESPN. Rozier from Louisville is going to give those Duke guards fits. They think they haven't been able to control the, the bounce. They're going to have a big time challenge with that kid. 6 4, 6 5. Models his game after Dwayne Wade. He can really put it in the hole. Washington on the baseline. Big shot. As North Carolina State won't go away. But North Carolina 
They're shooting 59% for the night as a team. So NC State just has not been able to get stops. Stay on page. Don't leave him. Make someone else beat you down the stretch. Time to shoot. Five on the time. A Britt comes up short. It's a good defensive possession there by NC State. Paying attention to detail. Keeping page away from the ball. Now Ralston Turner, Lacey, 22 and White respectively have to get involved on in the offensive end. He runs to the corner. Turner hits a three. Score the bucket. It's a chance for a four-point play. There's something about playing on your home floor as a player. You're always confident down the stretch because you know the rims, you know the feel of the gym. Ralston Turner not having a great night, but when they need guys to step up and get big buckets, it's been number 22 in white and number one in white, Trevor Lacey. Those are the two guys who are going to have to lead them back into the game on the offensive end. And the officials want to go over to the monitor just to make sure that it is indeed a three. And you can see clear separation between the right toes of Ralston Turner and the three-point line. So a quick confirmation that it is indeed a three, a chance for a four-point play. And he could surpass his total Sunday against Duke in spite of being in foul trouble most of the night. Turner's got 17, and it's a five-point game with 2.40 to go. said one last time, do not leave Marcus Page. For someone else on North Carolina to beat you, you play the percentage game here down the stretch, and you must keep them off the offensive glass. A foul called on Malik Abu away from the ball. That's his first. Ninth team foul on NC State, so it's the last one and one for North Carolina. And it'll be Kennedy Meeks to step to the line. Hey, not a bad foul shooter for a big guy, 69% from the line. I tell you what, he looks fantastic, doesn't he? All that weight he's lost. And he hits the front end of the one and one. You can see his game, Bob, emerging, evolving. A guy who's been primarily an in the paint guy. He's working on his low post game, back to the basket, and now able to make that 15 footer as well. Only one of two at the line, but the long rebound creates a scramble, and it stays with North Carolina. I think that'll be overturned. I thought that basketball was off Carolina. As Washington goes after it here, I, yes, that should be NC State ball. And they changed the call. It's a nice change by Jamie Lucky. We have a pretty good group of officials on the floor here tonight. On the perimeter, Lacey number one, 22 and White Turner, and if not, if they're going inside, Washington 22 has to touch it. But it's recovered in the backcourt by Britt. And he swoops in, pulled the string on the layup attempt. Turner, can he do it again? He comes up short, makes the rebound. That's a double double for Kennedy Meeks. NC State's done a nice job of staying at home. I think North Carolina has to use Page as a screener to get him open for a look. Meeks in the post. Puts it up, comes up short. Who's on the offensive glass but Marcus Page? Held ball, and it stays with North Carolina. Is he a gamer or what? Plantar fasciitis and a sprained right ankle on the same foot. Look at him go up 
and get the offensive rebound. Well, you love the hustle and the effort from the best player on your team. Has a tendency to be contagious, and it's been that way tonight. Well, he could play on my team any day. <laughs> Marcus Page is some kind of competitor. And let's take a look at our floor leader for tonight. Brought to you by Lumber Liquidators. Marcus Page has been the floor leader all night for the year. He's been phenomenal. Five for the three-point line. Or 15, rather. From three over the last several games. 35% over the last two. I thought he was very poised and patient. Letting the offense come to him. Never really forcing it. And looking relaxed out there. Making big shots in the first half with eight points. And he's been equally as terrific here in the second. Both teams are out of fouls to give. We're actually in the double bonus the rest of the way. You can see NC State's got three timeouts left. North Carolina, two. The possession arrow now belongs to the Wolfpack. But Marcus Page still sitting one assist away from a point assist double-double and still without a turnover. It's really, really impressive. He's played with tremendous poise tonight. And that's the thing I really appreciate about him. Even during that stretch when he wasn't shooting the basketball very well, Bob, he never allowed it to impact other areas of the game. Most players, if they're not shooting it well, they don't defend, they don't hustle points, none of that. That has not been the case for Marcus Page. Nice job by Cat Barber running Page off that shot. You got to use him as a screener. Difficult to guard a guy who's screening because usually the screener is open. And they have that little action where they run him off a little back pick that can create some separation for Page to get a shot off. One minute to go. Under 10 on the shot clock for the Heels. Page slips as Barber went down. The touch pass to Tokido. Held ball. And it belongs to North Carolina State. Actually, they'll say shot clock violation. The shot clock expired while the ball was still not possessed by either team. That is a phenomenal job by North Carolina State. Ralston Turner saw his teammate, Cat Barber, gamble for it. And to see Page wide open running him off that shot. That's really good recognition there by the Wolfpack. Ralston Turner, the red shirt senior, providing some extraordinary leadership here in the second half for the Wolfpack. Now, what could come into play, we'll see how these last 45 seconds play out. The fact that Jamie Lucky knifed in there and let everyone know that's a shot clock violation means that NC State keeps the possession out. Mm -hmm. So on a held ball, they would still hold on to possession. Ralston Turner time. For three. No. The back tap ends up with Marcus Page. He's fouled by a boot. You can't ask for a better look because that's a good shot for Ralston Turner, a guy who's made that shot here in the second half. Washington trying to keep it alive, but just couldn't. Page has been everywhere. Watch how quickly he get his feet set over there on the side. Not a lot of real estate over there. Nice job by Meeks, a longer, taller guy challenging that shot, and that's why that shot was short. Good recognition there by the big fella. That was the second time that Ralston Turner had a chance to tie the game with a three. But now you've got ice water in the veins of the junior Marcus Page, fifth best in the ACC shooting free throws. And he makes it a two possession game. You try to get something going to the basket to suck that defense in and try to find your shooters. One and 22 in white for North Carolina State. A little too much time here. Turner for three. The long rebounds. Abu rips it away. Throws it back up top to Lacey for three. That's good. Good timeout called by Mark Gottfried. One of the best times to shoot a three is off of an offensive rebound because most guys are down in the painted area. That was a nice late challenge there by both Tokido and Marcus Page, but Trevor Lacey has been in position this year to knock down big shots. Ice water in his veins from number one there in white. That's his first made three tonight. He's now one for six from three-point land. How easy is it? How difficult is it 
if you're NC State, to now try and dictate who the ball goes to. So you're fouling the player on the floor you want to foul. You don't want Marcus Page, I'm sure, to end up at the free throw line. Yeah, no, it's tough to ID during this time, and that's the luxury of having a guy like Kennedy Meeks, number three in blue, as a big. You don't have to play the substitution game late because you have a big who's an extraordinary rebounder and a guy who can knock down free throw shots. Most coaches don't have that luxury. The guys on the floor right now for North Carolina can all shoot it from the free throw line. If, if I'm North Carolina State, I'm going to try to freshman. I'm going to try to put Jackson in position to see if he can be a good free throw maker on the road, something that most freshmen have a difficult time with. Percentage-wise, Kennedy Meeks is the worst of the five free throw shooters on the floor for North Carolina. So Roy Williams has him throwing it in, and he can run the baseline. Stays put, throws wow. the home run to Tokido. And it is a foul call. A late whistle by Jamie Lucky on Cody Martin. And it will be Tokido to shoot two. And that's the experience coming from J.P. Tokido. Been in that scenario before. Read it beautifully. Saw that his defender was between him and the basketball. Went long. And how about the outlet pass there by Kennedy Meeks? We've seen that two times tonight from that kid. Looks a little bit, like I said earlier, like Kevin Love. The ability to make that little snap right on the dime. Late challenge there. Five. Good call by the ref. So J.P. Tokido, 67%. the big one to see if he can make it a four-point game with 11.5 seconds to go. Well, and that's why I said you have to funnel that to Jackson. To try Jackson as a freshman. Never been in this situation on the road. J.P. Tokido has been in these situations before. Go, the percentages say go to him. He's a veteran. I don't anticipate he's going to miss these, these three throws. He did miss. The game's still alive. Will NC State use a timeout? I think Mark Gottfried will. 7.4 seconds to go. They've got some guys that can knock down a three, and they will have a chance if you're North Carolina. Now probably finds you have to talk about if you're Roy Williams in that huddle. Do you foul, and when do you allow NC State to even get a three off? Yeah, I think that's going to be tough to foul right away because already they fouled Boston Turner shooting a three from the corner, gave him a four-point play, and so you have to be judicious about how you do that and so I wouldn't recommend it here early but I will say if Ralston Turner is going to the line you must guard the line and force this North Carolina Wolfpack North Carolina State Wolfpack team to shoot it from two take away Ralston take away Trevor Lacey force someone else to make that three-point shot but be careful of Kyle Washington because Kyle Washington can make a three well Ralston Turner he's been in foul trouble he didn't have the game all night but these threes in the second half got the back of the A prolific three-point shooter with a quick trigger. 42% from the three-point line throw. He was out early. Really made an impact on this game late and partially responsible for the team being down three. Look for Mark Godfrey to run a play to try to get Ralston Turner a shot here. But there's enough time. Yeah, he's got to go for it here. I was going to say there, there's enough time, but it's only 7.4 seconds on the clock. So you got to get a quick shot here, try to get an offensive rebound. If you don't get it, you got to foul right away. And the question for North Carolina, will they foul? Will they foul Lacey? Will they foul Turner? You have to think that the ball will probably end up in one of those two players' hands, trying to shoot a three to tie. Does North Carolina even allow the shot to get off? Barber's got it. Too much time. And there's the foul yeah. given by Britt. Too much time. You got to. On that sideline, out of bounds play. Ralston Turner's got to catch it coming off some kind of staggered or double screen here. Now, does Cat Barber who's a 69% free throw shooter, if he makes the first, automatically miss the second? I, I think you have to. But four, 3.9 seconds on the clock, there's just not enough time. It's not the NBA where you can foul right away and then advance it to half court. I think that would make the game a little bit more intriguing. I think the NCAA should adopt that rule. It's all is about this, viewership. <laughs> is this an intentional miss by Barber? Oh, he knocked it down. 
So now NC State's going to have to give the immediate foul. It goes into Britt. He is a 91% free throw shooter so far this season. Tell you, that's phenomenal. Extraordinary, actually, to have a guy who shoots the basketball with his right hand from the perimeter, but left hand from the free throw line, and to shoot it as efficiently as he does. And the foul called on Ralston Turner. So if Britt makes these free throws, and NC State needs at least to get a look from three before the game's over, their best three-point shooter, Ralston Turner, at least tonight, has fouled out of the game. Yeah, and that's one less guy that Carolina has to guard. So now you know that Lacey, number one in white, is going to be the guy who's taking that shot. Either he or maybe Kyle Washington. Kyle Washington at 44%. He doesn't try a ton of threes, mm -hmm. but he shoots a pretty good percentage. That might be your secret weapon if you're Mark Gottfried. Yeah, we mentioned that one earlier about two, two possessions ago. You may be able to run a little back screen action with Kyle Washington to try to get it around that three-point line area at the top of the key the way Duke ran it back in the day for Christian Leitner to try to get your best shooter coming towards the ball off a little screen there from Washington. And if there's a switch, Washington can catch and shoot. UCLA and USC coming up next. Dave Pass and Bill Walton standing by at the Galen Center. And Britt makes the first. He can't end the game. It'll still be a one possession game even if he knocks down the second. And he does. Does North Carolina foul again? The final timeout called by Mark Godfrey to try and set up something to get his team a three point look. But Roy Williams, he had Nate Britt foul almost immediately the last time that he knew the Wolfpack was going for a three. You have to think I would, I would imagine Fonzie do the same here. Uh, with, with, without a doubt. And it's going to be interesting. Uh, Mark Godfrey is thinking, how can he get the basketball from out of bounds on the opposite end of the floor to get it to the top of the key to give his team a chance to get a shot off? Like I said, I put two guys flanking the sidelines deep. Kyle Washington screening down, bringing Lacey to the basketball. If there's any kind of confusion, a nice catch up at the top, at least you get a shot at the basket. Boston Turner again is fouled out. Trevor Lacey is the third best three-point shooter in the ACC at 46% coming into tonight. But he has only made one of six. He did make his last attempt. Does he even get a chance to get one off here? Or do the heels foul? Cody Martin will throw it in. And he is unguarded. And now that Roy Williams gets a look at what the deployment yeah. of Mark Gottfried's Wolfpack is, he spends a timeout. Well, the same play that I was talking about, a little down screen action for Washington on Lacey. Instead of setting it in the, in the center of the floor, they actually moved it over here to the right side of the floor. So I don't expect that to change. Gottfried knew that there was going to be a timeout call, so he may move it to a different side of the floor. But either way, those two have to be involved. They're the best three-point shooters out there on the floor. If you're Mark Gottfried, you're in the huddle, and you're telling your team, we know Roy Williams is going to try to get one of his players to foul before we get this three off. Here's what you have to do. What does an NC State player have to do to try to get the three off? And maybe have it still be a decent look knowing that there's contact coming. But again, that's where the catch has to be around the three-point area that you can get a decent shot because it's a catch-and-shoot situation. And if they file during that time, then you get, four, you, you get an opportunity for a four-point play. Well, now Desmond Hubert is going to guard the inbound. As Cody Martin will have to throw it over the top of the six-foot-ten senior. Casey gets fouled. Tosses it up, but it was ruled to have been on the floor. So now NC State will be in the intentional miss mode if Lacey is able to knock down the first. Uh, yeah, you have to now with only 1.7 seconds. On. I'm still surprised that they didn't run something, try to get it to the center of the floor, just because you want to try to give yourself a decent look here. I think the percentages work better for you in that way. Lacey stays perfect at the line. But here's the one he has to miss. 
Coach Roy Williams smartly brings in Kennedy Meeks, a little extra girth, a little size to box out to make sure that Washington doesn't get in there for an offensive tip in. Makes the second and didn't mean to. You could tell. It's inbounded quickly to Marcus Page with one second to go. Bob, I've been in that situation before. It is so difficult. You almost have to shoot it with your opposite hand. It's so difficult to miss because your mind, you know, it's all mind over matter. Your mind is state is such that you want to knock it down and then to try to change it. You almost have to change your shot in order to do it. He tried to do it by putting a little extra elevation on the basketball, but that's kind of how we know him to shoot it from the three-point line. So not surprised that he made it. Still with one second to go. There is a chance for NC State to catch and shoot. Marcus Page might almost be better off missing this shot. He makes them both. That brings Desmond Lee back in. If Page misses that shot, the ball bounces around yeah. a little bit, but all NC State's Absolutely. doing without timeouts is throwing one the length of the court by making that shot. Now they have a chance to maybe set something up. A little confusion right now with North Carolina State. Home run pass inside the line. A foul is called. A foul is called before the horn sounds. So it's not over yet. This is going to be one more opportunity for NC State to intentionally miss the second free throw. Yeah, it went a little longer than NC State was anticipating because again they wanted to get it around the three point line but wow you don't want to foul in this situation <laughs> it's a two the worst he could have done or the best he could have done is made a two point shot now you put a guy on the line and giving them yet another chance here for the Wolfpack Isaiah Hicks called for the foul so Malik Abu will go to the line with two tenths of a second on the clock Malik Abu He's the perfect guy to be in the line if you want to miss one. Yeah. He only shoots 47%. He has to make the first or it's academic. If he then misses the second, you send everybody, I guess, to the rim and hope for yeah. a tip in. And he does make the first. Wow, that's a big shot for a freshman here, but he's got to miss this one to give his team a chance to tip it in. Under 3.3 seconds, it's got to be a tip in, not a shot. It's Cody Martin on one block, Kyle Washington on the other. And Trevor Lacey lurking. He might be trying to fly down the lane. Here's the attempted miss. It's up there, too. And Cody Martin almost got the job done. That was about as well executed as it could have been wow. for NC State. Watch how close Cody Martin was to tipping this basketball. Wow! Just couldn't get enough hand on it to direct it towards the middle of the rim. Wow! Nice execution there. Way to get after the basketball. Tough on game here for the Wolfpack. I really miss Ralston Turner 